Before history is written, it's played. Before it's frozen in time, it's fought one shift at a time. Before it's etched in silver, it's carved in ice. What happens next will last forever. The Stanley Cup Final on ABC and ESPN Plus begins Saturday. When you need mealtime inspiration, it's worth shopping Kroger, where you'll find over 30,000 mouth-watering choices that excite your inner foodie. And no matter what tasty choice you make, you'll enjoy our everyday low prices, plus extra ways to save, like digital coupons worth over $600 each week. You can also save up to $1 off per gallon at the pump with fuel points. More savings and more inspiring flavors make shopping Kroger worth it every time. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Fuel restrictions apply. I am Madison Timmons. I'm Chris Susie. And we're paranormal specialists who live in the most haunted city on Earth, Savannah, Georgia. Every day is Halloween in our line of work, so join us as we spin true tales of haunts, murders, and disturbing Savannah history. I'm Madison. I'm Chris. And, and welcome, welcome to, to the most haunted city the, on earth. Bop, bop, boom. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of the most haunted city on earth. My name is Madison Timmons. I'm Chris Susie, and I'm JT Timmons, and we are here with a ghost mail. Ghost, ghost mail. mail. You've got ghost mail. Yeah, we were waiting on it. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> Sometimes I forget. <laughs> it's okay. Ooh. Ooh. Just but play first, that in the background. But first, we got some good announcements. Yes, yeah, so we do have some good announcements. So first off, uh, the Waverly Hills film that we've made is basically a documentary on our uh, investigation at Waverly Hills Sanatorium in Louisville, Kentucky. It's going to be coming out on May 24th. Yes. Woo-hoo. And the trailer. That's, that's the public. It's to the, the public, 17th. yes. Yeah, it's the 17th on Patreon. Cool. Um, Yeah, the trailer, if you want to see it, is out everywhere. I just dropped yesterday from when we're filming this, so different Mm -hmm. day for when you guys are hearing this. But uh, it's on YouTube, it's on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, like literally everything you could think of. And you can find us on all of our social media under Haunted City Podcast. So if you don't follow us on social media, that is a good opportunity to go check it out. It's very mm-hmm. cool. Debria has worked very, very hard very on hard. this. So. Countless hours. So she really is excited to share all of it with y'all. Yep. Um, and the trailer is super creepy. I mean, I was there and I was like, ooh, that's <laughs> chilling. <laughs> yeah. It may not have been as creepy inside the morgue uh, drawer, but it was very creepy standing outside. Of it. <laughs> yes, it was. It's true. So, yeah, that will be out on YouTube, on our YouTube channel. Um and uh, that's going to be out on the 24th and then 17th on Patreon. Mm-hmm. All right. Yep. Yeah. And then uh, we want to thank some new pair of junkies because we've got quite a few recently. So we want to thank. Yes, welcome to the pair of junkie family. Yes. We want to thank Amy, Jamie D., Howard Mathis Jr., uh, Leslie Ann Duran or Duran. Uh, Aubrey, Nic- uh, Nicole, Nancy, and Marcy Riddle. Yes. Or right out. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Yes, welcome, y'all. Um, we have candy. Oh, uh, whoa, whoa. <laughs> that's, that's just weird. <laughs> we do not have candy. There is no candy here. We have here. no ads. Don't, don't let the candy be the reason <laughs> you show up. That's. We do have no ads, though. <laughs> we and do. We have a library, a full Smithsonian <laughs> Museum filled so uh, of content. Yes. Um, so you we can, will keep you busy. Yeah, we will keep you busy. You could literally just listen to us constantly if you wanted to. Um, yeah, so thank you all for joining us over on Patreon. Yeah. Um, and then I think a couple of those people actually sent in some ghost mail, so Ooh. I'm sure it'll be, it'll be coming up soon. Noise. Um, and then last but not least, last an- uh, announcement, we're going to be, well, JT and I, and hopefully Chris via Zoom, uh, are going to be at the Micaville Outpost right outside of Burnsville, North Carolina. Um, now, the Micaville Outpost has uh, become one of the places that JT and I really love in that area. 
it is it's only been open for a few months now yeah, only a few um, months like two three it, months yeah and they are such cool people um it looks like a normal little general store when you look at it on the outside mm -hmm. um but what caught our attention was it was like dry goods something in haints and we're like yeah. haints you got haints in there <laughs> they got um, haints. pick up a 12 pack of haints literally <laughs> and so we were like well we have to go in and yes um, and we got chris a shirt that we still have not given him yeah it's literally sitting <laughs> so they say <laughs> it is sitting in our house um it is bigfoot riding a bicycle it is being guarded by <laughs> gillith gillith mm. do our mm -hmm. cat she likes to sit in that basket next there to it go. so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um but yeah, so uh, we're actually going to be going out there and uh, we're going to do an interview with them talking about Appalachian folklore. Uh, Appalachia. Because uh -huh. they actually just put out a, a, a very interesting post about whistling in the woods and why oh, you yeah. shouldn't whistle in the Don't woods. Whistle. So take it mm -hmm. from people who literally live in those woods. Um, uh -huh. Have you ever so seen the video of the guy who's followed by a whistle? Like he was followed by a yes. whistle for yes. most of his I think life. I know what and you're he's talking like, about. He's like yeah. on a lake and he's like, do you hear it? And it's like like a two tone whistle. Yes, it's like a high I've and low. It. I've seen Ooh. it. That's so creepy. creepy. So creepy. Uh, so. But yeah, so we're gonna be talking about cryptids. We're gonna be talking about all sorts of stuff. Um, they in their shop, they have a ton of haunted objects. So I'm sure they'll show us some of those. Um, mm -hmm. And then, yeah, uh, my favorite thing in their shop is they have a um, moon eyed person with a moon pie yep. cut out. Yep. Yeah. It's pretty dope. It's pretty dope. Uh, so, yeah, that's going to be uh, on Patreon, live only on Patreon. Uh, that's Tuesday at 5 p.m. Yep. So, yeah, awesome. join Patreon awesome. and you'll be able to get it zero awesome. ads and it'll be just awesome. Yeah, we're just going to talk to them because they are, uh, they live their, they live their life in Appalachian folklore. So, be pretty I like fire. It. We're here for that. So. Yeah, and Coley uh, said that uh, she loves the trailer and it's wonderful. Oh. So, good and said go to Bria. Go to Bria. Go, go to Bria. Bria. Yeah, she she has been an editing Goes machine. Hard. Goes hard. Yes. Yes. All right. Is everybody ready for some ghost mail? Yes. We got the live stream going. Everyone's joined us. Let's do it. All right. So this first one is from Hannah. So hello, my name is Hannah, and I've been listening to your podcast on YouTube for about a year now. Just want to start off saying I adore y'all and I check for uploads basically every single day. <laughs> also, I would like to apologize beforehand for my bad grammar slash crazy long sentences. Sorry, JT. <laughs> All right, buckle up because this is going to be a long drive. I am buckled. <laughs> what's that? Uh, what's that meme where it's like, I am sat? I am <laughs> sat. <laughs> Um, for some context, uh, context, I am a young witch, 19 years old, um, okay. who has been setting up altars and unknowingly practicing protection magic since I was about 10-ish years old. I feel you. Uh, it'd be like that. <laughs> uh, recently, my family and I have had some stressful situations since the eclipse. Ooh. Oh, wow. Mm. Which is not surprising because after the eclipse, we also went into Mercury retrograde, which is the time of chaos and um, miscommunication. So unfortunately it was like a mass of chaotic energy coming at everybody. But um, my mom found out she has to move out of her home. On top of that, we learned that some of my late father's things, um, that some of my late father's things that we uh, were being looked after by other family members were auctioned off due to them not paying the storage unit bills. Oh. That's horrible i'm Ooh. so sorry Oof. um my father passed from lung cancer when i was 12. he was a motorcycle mechanic and a metalhead who had been building his own bike which my little brother and i were supposed to receive when he turned 18 along with some guitars and a few other things my brother's a dirt bike kid and basically has oil coursing through his veins <laughs> So this news was very devastating to us. He always looked forward to finishing dad's bike. And I always thought I would get the guitars when the time was right in my life. Naturally, me and my little brother and my mom have had a stressful few days and a terrible feeling of no control over our lives. Uh, but let's move away from the sad stuff and get into the spook of it all. Haha. <laughs> my brother just turned 17 a few days ago. This morning, he told me he experienced his first sleep paralysis episode. He explained it felt like something was holding him down on the bed by his head and keeping his eyes closed. 
He said he wow. couldn't see anything or move at all, but he could almost feel something out at the corner of his room. And kind of make it out in his mind's eye, he said. It was giving Dementor from Harry Potter. Sure. <laughs> this, yep. That's honestly how that's... I picture yep. sleep paralysis demons in my head. <laughs> Seriously, though. And um, which one was one of the stories that came in um, that was like the um, the mom oh, and, right. and, and her had been like uh, experiencing the thing that was like, look at me, look yeah. at me. I always pictured that as a... Uh, as a mentor, yeah. yeah. Um, he then told me he would uh, he could hear a faint laughter, and at first he was kind of laughing with it until he realized he didn't have any control over his body. Oh lord! Yeah, that's yeah. not funny. Troublesome. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the more scared he got, the louder and deeper the laughter became until eventually it sounded like something was right in his ear, laughing as loud as it possibly could. He told me he couldn't shake the feeling. That it was laughing at him and the fact that there was nothing he could do about these recent events. Jeez. Almost feeding on his anxiety and grief. He started yelling at it in his head and then he was able to shoot up out of the paralyzed state. He thought he had scared it away but he could still feel it lurking around outside his room. Now as I said before I am very witchy. I moved out of our house about a year ago so he took over my old room. I have lots of protection charms and other things still in that room, so I was very surprised when he told me this. Hmm. But I was confident that I could cast whatever this thing is away from him. Nobody makes fun of my little brother but me. <laughs> <laughs> After I explained to him that he could call into our father um, for protection, and that would certainly scare whatever this thing is away. Our father was a scary dude, to say the least. I started flipping through my newest book on witchcraft called A Blood and Bones. Hmm. I came across three pages with exactly the kind of spell I was looking for. A deer antler dominance spell to show this thing who's boss. Whoever, um, there, uh, however, there are strange green marks on these pages that I've never seen before, almost like fingerprints bleeding through the paper. This book is very new, very clean, and while my room is pretty messy, I don't uh, see how they would have got in the book because uh, they are not on the outside of the pages, only on the inside. Hmm. I find it very strange that the exact spell I want to use is marked. Hmm. It almost got me thinking how odd that an entity that wants to mess with my little brother would not immediately consider me as a threat, especially since he's sleeping in my old room with my magic. At first I thought how stupid of this thing and I found myself laughing at it. <laughs> Now, I still feel I should go through the, uh, with making this charm and cleansing the house. I've consulted my cards, and I want to trust my intuition. A part of me believes the marks could be from my father. He often reaches out to me, and I use this energy to protect myself on the daily. I always say if I have faith in anything, I have faith in the dead. However, his energy has never once been green. It's usually silver. I'm still a little concerned that this thing is smarter than, uh, than I laughed it off to be. <laughs> Then I opened YouTube to do my makeup and thought, oh, heck yeah, I finally have a ghost mail. <laughs> Another small yet strange detail. I told my bestie slash roommate about the situation. She joked that I finally have a reason to use those wasps. I have a jar with three big Asian wasps that I've been, di I've been dying to use in some kind of baneful protection work. <laughs> now listen, though. I'm kind of here for it. A little bit. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> we laughed about I bet it. That'll sting. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying. But anyways, uh, we laughed about it and we were making jokes like get lost or release the loss. <laughs> <laughs> when I sat down on the couch before work today, I looked down at the table to find just the head of a small wasp. I thought my, to myself, uh -oh. girl, what? I put it in the jar with the others, but I could swear I felt it move in my hand. Ooh. They absolutely reeked, by the way. Don't seal dead things in jars unless you're prepared for a punch in the nose when you open it. Oof. Who knew? I opened my book again to find a segment on wasps right before the antler spell, explaining how they are heavy hitters. Yes, oh. they are. They sing more than once and then call their friends over with pheromones. I can't tell if the marks in the head of the wasp are signs that I should hit this thing with my all or if it's, be it's begging for some kind of fight. I suppose I just have to make one 
um, Mac Fay daddy of a charm to find out. Um, <laughs> do you think I should include a wasp? How, uh, hopefully my brother gets some real sleep tonight. I would love to know y'all's thoughts on this situation. I'm going to make the protection charm and I'll send updates depending on how it goes. Once again, I love you guys so much. Y'all are my absolute favorite YouTube channel. Aww. Um, that's very Appreciate sweet. It. I'm so excited to see what y'all make of this. Hopefully you'll see my username on Patreon soon. It's usually X Leaf Soup X. <laughs> X Leaf Soup X. I right. almost said, sorry the ghost mail is so long, but whenever I'm listening to them, I think the longer the story, the better. True. Thank you, guys. I'm excited to see what content you have cooking up for us paranormal addicts. Have a lovely, spooky day, Hannah. Aw, Hannah, thank you. No, thank uh, you. So, mm. as much as I love Baneful Magic... Um, I'm a big fan. I don't know if it's smart in this situation. Maybe save the wasps for something else, you know? Um yeah, you know, so I get an impression that you might be dealing with something that was quite possibly feeding off of you and in your absence is trying to get you hmm. to give it more power. Hmm. Casting against it might be exactly what it wants. It might want you to expend a certain amount of power to power it. And one of those things that almost like feels like it could be is the delivery of a head to an enemy. That specific message, time honored, uh, is a bring it situation, uh, which also suggests you should not use wasps mm. because it seems like you're being goaded. Uh, just worth thinking about. I'm not saying that that's what's happening. It's just like something that that that's playing is like, oh, you say your room was warded, but that means it could be an entity that a knows your wards, b relies on you for something, and is using your brother to bring you back. So. Keep those kinds of things in mind as you move forward that that's possible. Those are possibilities. I'm not saying that's what's happening. I'm saying I get the sensation that you might be dealing with something. And you said it. That might be smarter than it appears because the one thing that you have to realize is that if it's getting past your wards, then it may have been there all along. Mm -hmm. And and it, it may have favored you. And may have given you some grace. And when you're gone, it hungers for you and is trying to get you back or trying to get you to expend energy. And if you expend energy from your home into that home, you build a bridge and it can travel that bridge right to you. So just be mindful. That's all I'm saying. I will say um, it might just be worth trying at least um, to do – a complete refresher yes. of your wards um, in the way of there's no way that an entity would know what exactly you're putting. Um, so making your own sigils. Uh, because a lot of people, especially when they first start out making wards, they will use common runes or um, protective sigils. Like that, the lookup sigils. Right, right, that are regularly used, which unfortunately is not the most powerful type of word that you could use because if you know about it, something else could know about it. Mm -hmm. um, but if you make your own sigil, which is not uh, difficult to do, uh, it really can be anything as long as you're putting the intention of like, this is what this means and only I know what this means. Um, that can be very powerful. Uh, you know, maybe I don't know exactly what you're warding your room with, but if you have crystals, it might be time to cleanse them. Um, yeah, crystals can be compromised. Yeah, pretty easily, especially uh, with, you know, softer crystals that absorb. So if you have a lot of selenite, it might be worth cleansing that. Uh, recommend getting black tourmaline or obsidian things that absorb. Uh, but you can also make wards out of anything. And so. entities that, that vibe with you. <laughs> entities that are able to share in your energy patterns, they're not going to be affected by your wards in that way because you're not warding against yourself. You know, so that's, we talk about mimics a lot and we talk about, 
uh, doppelgangers and things of that nature, there are spirits that will imitate your energy. They will uh, liken themselves to you because it it is a way to mimic living and being alive and having life force. So it does get tricky. And the attachment may predate your making of the wards, mm. which means that you were making the wards with this thing attached to you, and it does not drive the thing that's attached to you away. It just keeps other things from entering. Mm. So these are all interesting things because also if you ward something that's attached to you and you leave, the thing that's been warded might be stuck <laughs> inside the ward. So, you know, there's lots of like telltale, like, you know, I, 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 I think I've heard or, or been a party to situations like this mm. where someone had warded their house, but the spirit was now trapped inside the house, not outside the house. Right. Mm. And, and that can, that can happen. A spirit can get trapped inside your ward instead of outside of your ward. But y'all are so good at this. And I'm just like, there's a yellow jacket pun in there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> there definitely is somewhere. Um, but yeah. 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 I would say that's a good step. Um, don't do anything too, too drastic as much. Save those wasps for a good use. And you know? remember that anything that you cast is a direct line to you. And that's one of those things, you know, in those simple terms are like, you know, anything you cast will be revisited upon you three times. You know, those things, the reason why they, they, they have warnings like that is because you can't, it's not a grenade. You're not throwing it and then it's gone from you. Mm -hmm. It is a, it's a whip. You're cracking a whip and it is still in your hand because all of your intention is what powers the weapon. So be mindful of that. You know, all magic users need to be mindful that they are connected to their art. It isn't, you know, just because you want to like hit somebody on the other side of the world with something doesn't mean it's untraceable in those circles. It'll always be your spell and therefore hmm. traceable back to you. Cool. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, Hannah. Appreciate that, Hannah. Um, so the next one is a hat man story. Woo! Oh my gosh. Wait. So we, hold on. We got, I was literally just thinking, wow, we get a lot of hags and hat men. Yeah. Yeah. Sleep paralysis, hat man, <clears throat> hand in hand. What? In Apparently. The heck? Um, so that is crazy. But like, those are like the most common spirits to see. They I feel really like, are. I feel like the show is like low key kind of proven that. Like, yeah. well, and to think that hat man is a phenomenon that people are oftentimes introduced to. And then realize, oh, I've had this experience. Mm. I find that to be endlessly interesting. How many people I've told about the hat man only to have them realize, oh, when I was seven years old, this happened. It like gets pulled from their subconscious. Right. Well, because you don't think about it beyond I had a weird experience. And then when they really think about it, it's like, oh, he, he did have a hat on. <laughs> he he was wearing hat. a hat. Hmm. Um, so I don't know who this person's uh, or what this person's name is. So we're just going to call him Hat Man Friend. Hat Man Friend. <laughs> Hat Man Friend. So hello, it's me again. Um, hello, Hat Man Friend. I told you guys <laughs> the story about my brother seeing the red-eyed Hat Man. Oh, right. which, the red-eyed Hat Man. I was actually yeah. just thinking about that. Yes. Okay. We will never forget the red-eyed Hat Man well, because it was the first be time. Because when you're talking about the Dementor, I was like, yeah. you know, ever since we that one... <laughs> Ghost mail with the red eyed hat man. That's all I can think of. I wow. wanted to, I wanted to tell a quick. You thought about that today? Just now, just a second ago, just during that's that last nuts. ghost mail. That's yeah, nuts. when she was saying that uh, paralysis demons are are dementors, I was like, paralysis demons to me are hat men with red eyes. What in the heck? But yes, um, I wanted to tell a quick story of how men um, and my or, or I think they meant me and my brother unknowingly brought a malevolent mimic into our home. Lovely. And why we cleanse almost everything before we walk through our um, house threshold. Well, we're hitting all the bases. Oh, yes. Yeah. It goes like this. Around the end of August, in the first two weeks of September, my hometown of Dyersburg, Tennessee, has its yearly county fair. Before we go any further, Dyersburg? Yes, but it's spelled... Dyersburg. It's D-Y-E-R-S, Berg. Oh, I, I'm, I'm like, Dyersburg? That sounds like a Goosebumps it novel. Does. right? <laughs> In downtown Dyersburg, the evil Dr. Hench. Murderville. <laughs> but 
Dyer County and Dyersburg <laughs> Fair. <laughs> Around the time I was 16 and my brother was 15, I had just gotten off my learner's permit and got my license that year and drove us there. We ended up getting there before our uh, separate groups of friends showed up. So we decided to walk around and play a few carnival games and waiting on them so we all could go on rides together. When you enter the park, you buy game tickets and ride tickets. There were only game vendors that would take cash, or there were also game vendors that would also take cash only. And that's where it all started. We bought a few gaming tickets and started playing darts to win posters. I won a few with uh, anime characters and we moved on. At one of the vendors who took only cash, I saw a huge stuffed tiger and was, uh, and like any teenage girl, I needed to have it in all caps. <laughs> so, it's so fluffy. It's so fluffy. I'm going <laughs> to die. <laughs> Uh, so my brother paid a couple of dollars to try to get it for me, but only managed to win a tiny plush tiger that could fit in your hands comfortably. I was still happy that he even tried and cherished that tiny thing. The same vendor, before handing me the stuffed animal, tried to get my brother to play another round, double or nothing type thing, and we already knew the gimmick and just told him we'd take what we want and leave. The man seemed to get upset and handed the toy to me. Um, almost in a way, tossing it with a mean look on his face. We just shrugged and walked off um, to get something to eat and make sure my brother's blood sugar didn't drop before getting on any rides. Side note, my brother became a diabetic right around the time the hat man stopped visiting him in his dreams. Hmm. Interesting. That's horrifying. I actually wow. have a friend who um, had a life-threatening event, and he was so scared that he became diabetic. That fear was the cause of his diabetes. Whoa. That's horrifying. Yeah. And I never heard that before. And I was like, that can't be right. And he's like, that's what the doctors say, that I had such an anxiety attack that my endocrine system yeah. like, stopped working correctly. That's wild. He was so panicked. Wow. Um, that's wild. Literally just came out of nowhere. He was always an active kid and ate healthy foods growing up. The day we found out he almost died as we rushed him to the ER. Mm. My mama thinks it was a get back from the hat man for, um, from banishing him. That's even more concerning. Um, anyways, she remembered my brother saying he told her, um, him that he'd come back for him. Mm. And, she, um, and she was thinking that was him trying to come and collect. I think your brother's hat man might be the most horrifying hat man. He is so yeah. aggressive. So aggressive. So aggressive. I think he's a demon wearing a hat. I don't think he's hat man. I think he's yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, because I've never heard of a hat man coming to collect, you know? But there was that hat man in the backyard being all like trying to get in that one time. Yeah. yeah. But, the, but, but this even one, that. This one speaks. Yeah. That's another thing that is very rare for a hat man to talk or have eyes for that yeah. matter. So it's it's... It's endlessly fascinating, this, uh, this, this specific hat man saga. Yeah, it oh. really is. Um, she refused to let that happen and went to my auntie who prayed and cleansed him. Now back to the story. We get home and I hung my posters up and set my new plush with the rest of my stuffed animals I collected at the time. A few days would pass and things started getting creepy. The first thing that ha started happening was th um, things would disappear and reappear in other rooms. Mm. When that kept happening, it started making us angry at each other because we thought someone was playing around too much. Mm. One of those days, I had a bad argument with my brother because I thought he had hid my car keys. When I found them, they were sitting right next to the toy plush he had just won me. I usually always keep my keys on the kitchen counter and that threw me for a loop. There would be days when my parents would start arguing over small things, like full-on screaming matches. My parents had never argued like that in front of us. With each passing day, the arguments between me and my family became more frequent, and the energy of the house became darker and heavy. Uh, it felt like we were feeding into it. I chalked it up to be that we were having a rough patch in the family dynamic because there are two adults, or there are adults and two teens living in a confined area, with each other and the whole teenage, teenage rage and parents frustrated about it finally kicking in. The day I realized that wasn't the problem is when I started hearing the voices. 
At first, it didn't sound like much, more like a muffle here and there. Hmm. Then it started to sound like my dad, and a few days later, my mama. I remember one particular day I had just got home from school. My brother had football practice and my mama didn't get off till three hours after we got out of school. My dad usually got off around an hour after I got home. So I'm home by myself. I make me a snack and go to a room uh, to my room to watch uh, Toonami, if you know, you know. Uh, about 30 minutes into my show, I heard my dad in what sounded like a whisper at first. Call my name from my parents' room. I was confused. Mm. I hate that. Ooh, I hate that. Um, I was confused because I never heard him come into the house. Not paying attention to it, thinking it was my imagination, I kept watching my show. Then it called my name louder and clearer. Nope, Courtney, nope, nope, come here. Nope, nope, nope. Okay, so now we have a name. Courtney. Thinking that he did indeed come home and I was I just wasn't listening, I get up and walk to their bedroom door. I peek my head in and nothing. The room was pitch black and I walked around the house, now terrified that someone was in the house with me. As soon as I finished my walkthrough, my dad walked through the kitchen door. He asked me if I was okay and I told him what happened and he decided to walk the property himself to make sure no one was there. I started getting scared because the old folk around here used to always say, if you hear a disembodied voice, never answer back because that's the devil trying to lure you. Ooh around this time, my brother started having weird dreams again. No, the hat man never came back, but he didn't like them nonetheless. Well, it was copying my dad's voice only. It was copying everything about my mama. I remember sitting in the living room next to the window, power reading a book that needed to be returned the next day to the library. I looked up to see my mama walking past the fireplace going towards her bedroom from the direction of the kitchen. So her path was kitchen, living room, hallway, parents' room. Her appearance was odd and she was stiff in walking, mm. straight back and head forwards without looking at me. She always made sure to make small talk anytime she walks to a room with any of us in it before moving on. She didn't this time. A few minutes after, I heard her voice say from their room, food will be ready soon. Mm. She was making lasagna that night, and I thought she went to her room to, uh, uh, to wind down while it was in the oven. I ended up closing my book and turning on the TV. As I flipped through the channels, I saw my mama again, but she was coming from the kitchen again. Mind you, she never walked back to the kitchen after I saw her the first time, and she actually stopped to ask what book I had in my lap to make small talk. I stared at her wide-eyed. I still get goosebumps thinking about who or what I saw. My dad had gotten home later that night because he was helping my grandma, uh, grandmama with housework. I sat them down and told them uh, what was happening, and my, uh, me and my brother chimed in with his stories as well. He was hearing and seeing cup, uh, copies of each of us walking around the house. My dad said he had been experiencing it also, but didn't want to scare us, so he kept quiet. We slowly... I'm like chill bomb. Literally. Like straight up chill bomb. We slowly started putting two and two together and realized something started happening around the time we brought those prizes from the fair. He told me and my brother to bring any and everything we won or bought to him. I took the posters down and brought the stuffed animal to, to him. I kid you not, as my dad pulled out the holy oil my auntie gifted him, the faces on the posters started turning menacing. It was like being in a movie of the Haunted Mansion or something. But the item that had the darkest energy was the stuffed animal. My dad had it in his hand, and the face on that little tiger looked like a demon. He and my mama prayed over the animal, and a dark shadow jumped from it and scurried off. The posters and the stuffed animal returned to normal, but my mama knew whatever it was was still in the house and opened every window and door and lit white candles while my dad prayed over every corner of the house. As he was finishing, we heard a loud bang at the back door and ran towards it to see the screen door closing back. Whatever it, must, it was must have ran out. We proceeded to close and lock the doors and windows and do a protective prayer around the house to make sure it didn't come back. After that, we never had problems with the prizes we won. 
I kept that tiger for years until one of my little cousins found a liking to it and I gave it to her. She never had any problems with it either. We told our grandma about it and she thinks that man might have put juju on our stuff. She used to talk to uh, talk us to or take us to the fair all the time when we were younger and always told us she never liked the energy it brought to the town. To this day, before bringing any gifts, prizes, antiques, etc., we always try to remember to cleanse it before letting it enter the threshold of our house. Oof. We live in Georgia now, moved here back in 2010, and we have collected a few new stories from living here. <laughs> it's nice to know that Georgia is just as spoopy as Tennessee. Well, my goodness, Courtney. Um <laughs> Hannibal Lecter. Wow. That, that, that was like a horror film. That was a horror literally, movie. Absolutely. Well, because that was the last thing I was expecting to, you to say when you cleanse the tiger was that you were going to see the entity yeah, jump leap out. from it and, and like, scurry away. Ugh. Oh, my Lord. Which is concerning. It's terribly concerning. Um, so if you <laughs> so if you live in <laughs> Chris is stressed out, yo. Well, yeah. He's stressed. Like if you're listening, you should just see this man right now. <laughs> yeah. There's just so many implications going on because yeah. here's the thing. I don't think the entity in the tiger was the mimic. I think the entity in the tiger was drawing from multiple en entities from all around because mimics generally affix to single it, it, because it's working hard to be the individual in question. So, you know, mimics are oftentimes uh, repeatedly the same person. Mm. So the fact that there was a mimic of your father, a mimic of your mother, a mimic, mimic of you uh, becomes an intriguing thing and it's like you might have just been at ground zero of just a swell of energies and entities the tiger was a battery the thing in it a powerful source of energy mm. uh but that doesn't address the mimics <laughs> right so, so i would be interested if you're still having very subtle versions of that same sensation if you're having very subtle things because, and, and this is an interesting thing, like when people go to haunted buildings and they have pronounced experiences, but those experiences are very personal, the chances are they are experiencing ghosts that are following them around and now they're in a space where the energy gives them the ability to be known. If you bring some item into your house that emanates an energy and the spirits of the house suddenly have more strength and more energy and more, you know, ability, they make themselves known. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a fascinating thing because yeah, like when, as I wasn't sure what to think of these items, but if, if there was some bad mojo on the tiger, if the tiger was harboring a spirit specifically, um, it's possible that spirit was emanating such immense power because you talked about the negativity the mm -hmm. in fighting with your family that's usually a cursed item a cursed object near you that can cause like the kind of turmoil you're talking about and that's what i thought we were going towards right but then there started being this mimic thing which is kind of a different category uh because generally mimics do not um thrive on seeding mistrust between people because they want you to trust each other they want you to to answer when you call. That's, so if there's right. this negativity going on in the family, it doesn't serve a mimic. Mimics are oftentimes very kind and very nice. So that's what I was going to say. I was I was going to mention that next. Uh, uh, like once you made your point, but you're making the same point as I was it, about to make, is that a mimic, wouldn't a, if it was a mimic, wouldn't it try to not be weird? Like would it try to not be like, uh, hey, I'm a mimic? It's trying its hardest to be the person that it's mimicking, right. yeah. um, which is why it comes across as just a little bit off. Like how you're <laughs> yeah. saying, you know, like the one with your mom, like how your mom always makes small talk anytime she enters a room with people in it and how it was walking, walking stiffly. And yeah, yeah cause it's it imitating. Exactly. It's not getting it fully but why right. Would it, why would the dad whisper? 
That's my whole right. thing. No, it, right. that's just it. Yeah, all yeah, all yeah. of these pieces are are, are, are kind of broken into mm-hmm. this, this weird picture because, for instance, if you and your mother are in a, in a big fight uh, because these negative emotions and this negative energy has caused you to fight, uh, when the mimic's like, come into this room. If you're mad, you're not going to go into that room. You're not going to respond to your mother if if you're fighting with them. So it doesn't behoove a mimic for you to have this kind of strange stressors going on. So it's 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 interesting to me that that's kind of what it feels like is you brought a big battery into your, your house. Your house is full of mimics. <laughs> Yeah, which Lord. is horrifying. Which is horrifying. That is horrifying. Which is yeah. which which uh, which is a whole different. And and now I'm like, I need to hear the stories from Georgia, to see you know is there still a lineup? Because here's the interesting thing: we've been talking and talking about how the Hat Man doesn't behave like any Hat Man we know. Could the Hat Man be a mimic mimicking a Hat Man? Ooh. Whoa. Ooh. Could the could that Whoa. could could a mimic? Have experienced a hat man. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. very likely that oh, yeah. y- your 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 brother was experiencing a hat man entity, and the mimics like that entity and you are connected. So I'm going yeah. to be that entity, and that's why it talks, and that's why it's like it's me. Yeah, the with hat the, man with the red eyes who's always watching you. Yeah, I, you see me all the time. Yeah, you know, that's it, it, it creates this weird sort of. Are you dealing with with like tiered levels of of entities? I'm I'm fascinated. I'm a little scared. And uh, all right, the I, poll on Spotify for this episode is mimic or no mimic. Mimic right. or no mimic. If you're still listening, you know what we're talking about. <laughs> mimic Vote or now. No mimic. Mimic or no mimic. Mimic or no mimic. Because yeah, that's actually really interesting. Because the fact that the Hat Man gave your brother diabetes, basically, or just threatened him outright, th- right. in words, mm-hmm. is so insane and i every so many people will will tell you that the hat man merely observes merely right. stands in the corner merely present but uh even in the the first story that you shared with us he was behaving in ways that are new to us as far as hat men are concerned mm-hmm. so uh so and now that you're telling us the story that you had mimics or a mimic that that is very gifted you know uh, very you know performing multiple personalities in short order of each other. Yeah, that's that's fascinating and that that suggests that there might be more to uh either the location where you used to live or your family as a whole um and you might not be done. Yeah. I think uh, looking at the email, I think uh her name is Saki. So Saki, uh that's creepy as hell. Yeah. Well, uh the uh, mimic ghost dad uh, called, her called, Courtney. called her Courtney. So. Oh, Courtney. Yeah, yeah. Courtney. You're right. Okay. Yeah. But yes, Courtney, please. That was creepy as hell. Yeah. Uh, s- send an update. Yeah. And um, and 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 in in an update, think about since the tiger incident mm-hmm. to now, are there are there other mimic oriented kind of things because they don't have to be as outright they don't have to be like seeing or thing but even like simple deja vu can be a mimic's influence on you nope send it in balls in your court knee all right <laughs> oh no oh yeah i'm back never went anywhere oh yeah that's the response to the pun all right let's uh let's bust it down Okay, well, anyways, um, <laughs> well, thank you all for sending in your ghost mail. Uh, very enthralling stories, as always. So. Awesome. Now, both of them were kind of cinematic. Yeah. I mean, they, they, were. Were, they, they were, were really good. Very good. Um, so if you have a ghost story that you want to share with us, you can find us at ghostmail at hauntedcitypodcast.com. Uh, but with that, my name is Madison Timmons. I'm Chris Susie. And stay spooky, y'all. <laughs>